why don't we um, talk about what's Wait, going on yeah. with all these fires and shit? But why don't we um, yeah. why don't we play this PBS clip real quick, and then um, we can come back and and get into it. And we're, we're gonna we'll say this again, but this is um, there's a lot of really uh, intense imagery, and so you know. Be prepared. This next segment isn't exactly going to be fun. Um, so, yeah, don't watch it. This is <laughs> next to local news coverage, it's... It's harsh, and it's intense what's going on. And it's important that people are aware of it. We just wanted you to be prepared that this there's going to be some pretty intense imagery in this next segment. So, so get Takey out of the room already. Yeah. All right, this is a PBS <laughs> clip, and then we'll be back, and we'll be showing some more. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Two deadly wildfires continue to burn in California, where thousands of firefighters are working to save homes and lives. In Northern California, the death toll from the so-called Camp Fire has climbed to 23, as officials continue to search for more than 100 people who remain unaccounted for. The fire in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains, north of Sacramento, has burned 109,000 acres and is 25% contained. More than 6,700 structures have been destroyed, mostly residential homes, making it the most destructive in California history. About 500 miles to the south, the Woolsey Fire continues to threaten areas around Los Angeles. About 250,000 people have been evacuated, and the fire is being blamed for at least two deaths there. Fire officials say the blaze is 10 percent contained. The Santa Ana winds picked up today, creating tougher conditions for firefighters. The winds are expected to remain through Tuesday. For more, I'm joined via Skype by Julia Sule from the Bay Area News Group. She's in Paradise, a town of 27,000 people that's been decimated by the so-called campfire. Julia, uh, describe what you're standing in, what's left of this town. Wow, it's, it's so grim. I have to tell you, just driving through how much carnage is just, it's amazing. I, I'm standing in the wreckage of what appears to be a church. There's just nothing left. What is so astounding about Paradise, there still are some buildings, the businesses on the main drag of town, there are a few, but it's all the residences. 90% of the homes in this place are gone. You chronicled some of the stories of people that were trying to get out. What's the scene that they describe? Well, what really got me was you know, these abandoned cars, and it's just so apocalyptic. It's like a scene from The Walking Dead or something, and you just wonder. I couldn't help but imagine what it must have been like to be sitting in one of these cars and no way out. And unfortunately, the scariest thing of all is that some people actually perished in their vehicles. But the ones who got out were just amazing. This one couple, they, they were in bumper to bumper, they said, We'd rather die fleeing together than in separate cars. You know, they went to the edge of a cliff and they slid down on their rear ends and deer and turkeys were coming down with them and they forded a creek and finally another five miles to safety. I mean, the stories are, are just epic and uh, stories of heroism. I spoke with a school bus driver who was stranded with a seven-year-old autistic boy for hours. Uh, ultimately, they got out safely, too, but it's just terrifying for people out here. Is this area now safe? Are people allowed to go back in yet? No. There are so many downed power lines. A lot of PG&E crews are here. We're driving. Of course, we're able to go in um, with press passes. It's just very hazardous. What is the plan there for this town? I mean, the evacuees or the everybody from that town and the surrounding towns are now in uh, elsewhere. I spoke with the mayor of Paradise last night, and I said, what is it like to be the mayor of a town where nothing's left? And she said, you know, hey, the Ace Hardware is still there. And we have one grocery store, two are gone, but one is there. So, of course, she's looking on on the bright side, um, I was at a meeting last night when one of the community members said, should I go back? Should I return? And she said, it's really up to you. Julia Sulek of the Bay Area News Group joining us via Skype from Paradise, California. Thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Okay, well, that broke it down pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty stoked on uh, what he would have to say. That was freaking intense, though. I mean, some of the stuff that he was talking about. It's crazy, man.
Paradise isn't a city anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, Paradise is no longer, huh? 90% of the homes are gone. That's just the home. Dude, she was, she was full on, like, she had, she nailed it. It looked like a theme from uh, The Walking Dead. I've never even fucking seen that show, so. And, and you know what, man? Can you imagine dying in your car? Okay, no. well, look, look, Shannon, you, you came across some other clips of what's going on. It's, it's uh, a super graphic, <laughs> and uh, this is it's a little more shocking, I guess, than what you just saw. But um, it really gets to the root of the effect this has on real people. Yeah, and when it's, when it's Santa Ana wins, it's just... It's chaos. There's no way their firefighters can't do anything. They know that. Oh, it's just preventative to get people out. Not and even preventative. It's animals. just fucking. It's maintenance. Yeah, I mean, the, the, seriously, it's the reason they're called the devil wind. Yeah, there's no precipitation, and they. I mean, they can. They're just hoping, yes. they're just trying to keep it from getting any worse. I mean, there's, it's almost, there's no containment at all with the Santa Ana's are blown. Yeah. So, I mean, Santa Ana's, I mean, if people don't know what the Santa Ana winds are, I mean, they come out of the, they come out of the mountains and they suck all the humidity out of the atmosphere, out of the uh, ground, out of the trees, out of the bushes, out of everything. I mean, what's, what's the humidity in, in California now? What is it, zero? Ten? Maybe? I mean, it's fucking, everything is dry. Like nothing. I put it this way, my and fingernail keeps cracking and popping off, so it's pretty dry. Yeah, and let me see, when I, was the last time it rained? I think you guys had rained, what, maybe last month? But, I mean, you got to consider, California's still in, what, a five, six year drought, if not more? Oh, yeah, but it's fucking, uh, it's, 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 I, I it's, 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 I, I can't remember if it's four or five years, but really it's been eight to ten. I mean, like you know, we used to live here. It's oh, oh, it's been I, longer. I mean, yeah, we had one one season where we had plenty of rain. Everybody's like, oh, drought's over. No, drought's not fucking over. Have you been up to Big Bear recently? Have you seen the dead trees up there? The drought never. You know, it, then, okay, so you have no rain. So you have no rain, Janet, right? And then you have Santa Ana wind. So they come out of the heat and they suck all the humidity out of everything. So now everything's crisp and dry. How does your skin feel right now? Well, listen, aside from the way it, it cracks your skin and the weather and the way, I mean, it's it's uh, you know, essentially a sort of perfect storm, but it has um, right. real life effects. And not just for real people, which we're about to see. Uh, Devastating. Lives devastated, but it's also the ecology, it's also the environment, and it's also wildlife. Um, this is so devastating in so many ways, and so I want to show this video and let you see for real what the real effect that this is abandoning our environment for so many years is having. Here's here, here's where we're at, guys. Check this shit out. Please, God. Please leave the horses there, please, God, please. <laughs>
Wow. That's fucking heavy, dude. An owl on the beach. I've seen some shit on the beach before, but never an owl. It, it's harsh. When I when I was living in Silverado, I went through four fires in just shy of four years, something like that, about four years. Um, and one of the last ones last year, it was pretty bad. The same forest. I'm just on the other side of Orange County. Um, right. So, it, it just, this past time that it burnt, it, it, there wasn't wind. It's just a canyon and we have normal winds, but there's so much fuel and it's so dry and it's been so dry that it just, <clears throat> It creates its own weather and storms, and it just keeps going and going and well, going. Well, and, and then, Shannon, what's, what's the reverse of that? The reverse is you have you have a rich winter, okay, and then all the vegetation grows. So now you have all this stuff that's overgrown because we had a, we had a wet winter, right? Yeah. Now all of a sudden, you know, it dries out the summertime, and now you have even more fuel. You know what I'd like to do, guys, and um, we hadn't planned on this in, in the pre-production, but I'm going to throw in right here um, a clip of um, Noam Chomsky speaking recently. Um, obviously, he's been talking a lot about how, um, one, that the Republican Party is the single greatest threat to life on Earth, and he's also um, showing the relevance of that to um, what's going on with... There's been a recent study that shows that basically we're looking at about 10 years. We're looking at about 10 years, man. If we don't get on this right now, we're looking at about 10 years. Is this from Democracy Now? Um, I can't remember. Talking? Can I be honest with you? Uh, I don't remember what outlet I saw this well, clip on. I will find okay. it in post-production and drop I it in right here. But one of his recent speeches. He's been talking this same, same sort of kind of narrative on, on right. a number of different outlets. I'll find one of the clips and I'll throw it in right here. But, but I know three years ago, that they warned us that we were approaching the tipping point in a year or something like that. So, yeah, it's just, but what was Marvin singing about, you know? That's right. You want to watch that clip? Yeah. And then we'll come back and, and, and uh, yeah, we'll... You know, I want to talk about uh, sort of Trump's role in all this, too. <laughs> oh, uh, God. A couple of weeks ago, the uh, IPCC, the international group of scientists monitoring climate change, came out with a very uh, uh, ominous report uh, warning that uh, the world has maybe a, a decade or two to uh, uh, basically end its uh, reliance on fossil fuels. Uh, if we're to have any hope of uh, uh, controlling uh, global warming uh, below the level of uh, utter disaster. And that, incidentally, is a conservative estimate. It's a consensus view. Uh, there are repeatedly over the years, it has been pr shown that the IPCC analyses are uh, much less alarmist than they should be. Now comes this report in Nature that you mentioned a couple of days ago, uh, which shows that uh, there has been a serious uh, underestimate of the, uh, 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 of the warming of the oceans. And they conclude that uh, if these results hold up, the so-called carbon budget, uh, the amount of carbon that we can spew into the atmosphere and still have a survivable uh, environment, has to be reduced by about 25 percent. That's over and above the IPCC report. And the uh, opening up of the Amazon to further exploitation uh, will be another uh, serious blow at the prospects of survival of organized human society. Uh, I should, at the same time, the Trump administration right now is opening up new areas of the West 
for uh, fracking, for increasing uh, the use of fossil fuels. Uh, the, uh, 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 I, I, you've probably seen, maybe discussed, the, one of the most amazing documents I have ever seen, the uh, Trump uh, uh, Department of uh, Highway the Standards, whatever it's called, just issued a long report, 100-page report, uh, urging that all regulations on automotive emissions should be ended. And they had a very logical argument. They said, if we extrapolate current trends, uh, by the end of the century, uh, the climate will have warmed uh, several degrees centigrade, uh, meaning a huge rise in sea level, which they underestimate. So basically, we're going over the cliff anyway. And automotive emissions don't really add much to this, so there's no point uh, cutting them back. Uh, the assumption of the, uh, uh, the department is that everyone in the world is as criminally insane as we are and isn't going to do anything about it. And since on that assumption, yeah, let's, uh, let's just rob while the planet burns, uh, uh, putting uh, Nero into the shade. He only fiddled while Rome burn, burned. Uh, I can't think of anything like this in human history. You just can't find words to describe it. And it's, I mean, at the peak of the monstrosity is, in fact, the Trump administration. Uh, we should recall that uh, Trump himself, as I mentioned, is a firm believer in global warming. Uh, recently, he uh, applied to the government of Ireland uh, for permission to build a huge wall, one of his famous walls, uh, this one to protect a golf course of his in Ireland, which, as uh, his plea indicates, is threatened by sea level rise as a result of global warming. Uh, you take a look at the uh, big banks, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase and the others. They're increasing their investments in fossil fuel uh, development. The energy corporations are working all over the world to try to find new resources to destroy the environment. Uh, the media are focusing on real uh, outrages, like the ludicrous uh, uh, military preparation for this uh, wave of uh, mothers and children planning to invade us and destroy us. You know, they're concentrating on that. But take a look at their coverage of these things. And so uh, there was a big report, long front page uh, report in the New York Times a couple of days ago about the opening up of the West to further fossil fuel uh, uh, the extraction. Uh, discussed everything you can think of, did mention some of the negative consequences, like it might harm uh, water resources, it might make things ha harmer, uh, far harder for uh, ranchers. Not one phrase, one phrase in this long report on the effect on the environment in the political campaign going on, every, all kinds of issues are not discussed, but not the two existential threats that the human beings face, threats that have never arisen in human history. We have to make decisions now which will literally determine whether organized human life can survive in any decent form. You can just imagine what the world would be like if the sea level rises, say, uh, um, 10 or 20 feet or even higher is within the range, easily within the range of predictions. I mean, the consequences are unimaginable, but it's as if we're kind of like uh, the proverbial lemmings, just happily marching off the cliff, led by leaders who understand very well what they're doing, but are so dedicated to enriching themselves and their friends in the near future that it simply doesn't matter what happens to the human species. There's nothing like this in all of human history. There have been plenty of monsters in the past, plenty of them, but you can't find one who was dedicated with passion 
to destroying the prospects for organized human life. Hitler was horrible enough, but not that. Welcome to the sixth mass extinction. Okay, so there you go. Noam Chomsky, monotone delivery of the most horrible, awful information you could possibly hope to hear. <laughs> You nailed that one, dude. I know, you got so much to say, but he's so monotone. <laughs> yeah, trust me, man. If, you yeah. are, if you're having trouble getting some sleep and it's late at night, put on a long Noam Chomsky talk. Yeah, but... Iranian friend that li- lives in Sweden shared it to my timeline, and I couldn't get through the whole thing. <laughs> I was like, I know I should watch this because I know it's some important shit, and he knows his shit. And I just And he knows and he knows he's that way too. I've heard him in and more than once talk about how um people are definitely not watching me for entertainment value and for my, you know, dynamic speaking voice. You know, they they're coming to me because they want to hear about the information I have. Right. But so, but look, here's the bottom line, man. I absolutely agree with Noam Chomsky. Um, you know, we on this channel, we've actually criticized Noam Chomsky recently, and we weren't happy with some of his narratives on Antifa and Black Bloc, and we were critical of him of that. We're not, you know, there's a tendency on the left that if Noam Chomsky says it, it's gospel, or it's like, here's a Noam Chomsky quote. And if he, if it's a, if it's from Noam Chomsky, you're just wrong because you know Noam Chomsky, and he's still fucking brilliant. And I wholeheartedly see the um, the the uh, truth in what he's talking about and the factual basis of what he's talking about. Man. And Trump is not fucking helping shit. He is immensely exacerbating the issue and the problem. Okay, Doc. Okay, let's deregulate the fucking fossil fuel industry. Sure, let's just fu- deregulate the fuck out of them. Yeah. I'm telling you, when's the last time you saw It's a Wonderful Life? I'm sure it's going to be rolling through pretty soon here because, you know, it's that time of year. Right. Check out Pottersville because that's where the fuck we're headed. I mean, can you see now, bro? I mean, it's, we're going to have black skies. The greatest, we're going to have the cleanest air. How can you have the cleanest air and deregulate the fucking fossil fuel industry? Oxymoron, motherfucker. Well, it's just it's you There's know the it's, going it's on. mismanagement of the of the of the of the forest. It has nothing to do with climate change. It has nothing to do with you know the, the drought in California. It's forest mismanagement. And how do you expect to fix that? Yeah, well, somebody responded. Somebody responded to his tweet about forest mismanagement. Did he not, Shannon? Um, yeah. Who was that? Well, and- yeah. That was Cal Fire. <laughs> that was Cal Fire. They called Cal Fire did? Doofus Dingleberry. Doofus he calls him Doofus Dingleberry, dude. Cal Fire called the president Doofus Dingleberry. Because told him it's like we'll, we'll I'll, I'll I'll put the image up so people can see it. But um he, he they tweeted back at him his tweet of you know of Trump talking about how forestry his forestry uh, is a government agency. It's a government agency. It's He's like, yeah, so you're in charge of it. So you know, you're the one you're criticizing, <laughs> Doofus Dingleberry. <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, a few other people weren't so happy either. Firefighters, no, and, um, the union president. He, he said something, too. It, you know... And Neil he, Young said some shit, too. Before, and people have have come back at him and explained shit to him, basically. But they're kind of now... I mean, you know, doofus, dingleberry. It's like, fuck you. They're to the point of, fuck you. With Trump and this. And the, the whole they're thing the, is... They need to it then. Part of the blue state, red state shit... Possibly, also sanctuary state, right? But he's gone this whole thing. There's this myth thing, and it's an Alex Jones thing. Because someone who I know, and I can't mention who, relayed this story to me. And it's that whole false weather shit, you know, and the 
Okay, harp, so Alaska yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, harp. Because they have a fucking thing and they create weather. It's called harp. H a a r p. It's a, supposed to be a weather manipulation. Actually, um, Kylie the Kronkenschwester. Can I just say this really is quick? Our president, he thinks like this. So I, I'm just going to say really quick. Kylie the Kronkenschwester is actually researching a video about all this of this, about the weather right. manipulation, conspiracy theories, and all this stuff. So that's kind of interesting that you brought it up. And it is terrifying that our president would be buying into this ridiculous nonsense. That's where it comes from. That's where the we're not. Uh, um, like thinning the forest properly and blah blah blah. blah. Right. First of all, there's so many fucking fires, and somebody did come out the fire we had here. Um, I don't know what fire agency, but a, some fire official came out and did clarify to him, you know, that they're fighting so many fires. Him personally had had two days off in a year and not together because he's fighting fires. They don't have time for the routine maintenance because they're wow. fighting fires. Wow. That's how bad it is. And that's been for the last three years or so. It just, And then the fires just get larger and... But know, yeah, why don't you just come out... I mean, like, people. look, man, we, we talk a lot on our channel about fuck the pigs. But one thing that you're never going to hear on our channel, at least that I, not from me is fuck the fire department. Like, that's well, actual heroism, man. Those are fucking... Well, if they're a firefighter and they're being a, fashion, a fascist, fuck like, that people, dude. People, fuck that individual people. person. But in general, what firefighters do is... It's beyond heroic. It is the epitome of, her, of, of heroism and, and bravery and fucking... They're to be honored. And to tell them that they're that the firefighters are why the fires are fucked up, it's the firefighters' fault. Way to go, President. You know. Well, and the whole thing is is in paradise. That is a forest setting. That that's different. However, um, Malibu down there, Ventura. That that's irrelevant. That's not how it happened, dude. <laughs> First hey. of all, it's the Santa Ana winds, you know? That's Somebody what saying. farts in it. Yeah, but the Santa Ana winds, wind, there's a climate. Like, and the climate has changed, and you're getting more Santa Ana winds, and they're harder and they're drier, and that's because of climate change directly. So Neil Young, the Rolling Stone has a piece about Neil Young responding to Trump's bullshit, and... Um, says, uh, the headline is, Neil Young blasts Trump over California wildfires tweet. That's what climate change looks like. Uh, it says, uh, Neil Young issued a dispatch on his archive site to blast Donald Trump's tweets regarding the California wildfires. The rocker also revealed that his own home near Malibu had been destroyed in the blazes that have thus far caused historic damage in both northern and southern California. Quote, California is vulnerable. Not because, because of poor forest management, as DT, our so-called president, would have us think. As a matter of fact, this is not a forest fire that rages on as I write this, Young wrote. We are vulnerable because of climate change. The extreme weather events and our extended drought is part of it. Young went on to explain the science behind the California wildfires and why Trump is a quote-unquote denier of climate change. Quote, it really is time for a reckoning with this unfit leader. Maybe our new Congress can help. I sure hope so, Young wrote. He continued, Firefighters have never seen anything like this in their lives. I have heard that said countless times in the past two days. And I have lost my home before to a California fire. Now another. See, and I, when people say, oh, people shouldn't build their house, da, 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 it's like, shut the, you know what I mean? Totally. Look, he goes on, he says, but I'm at the foothills, I'm in a canyon, I'm in a prime spot to get caught, you know? But people don't have choices or options a lot of the time. Sometimes it's not a choice. Sometimes it is, and so what? Oh, you, you, mean, you, mean, you, oh, you mean like buying a home next to a volcano? Because sometimes it's not a choice, and sometimes that happens. And they said the same fucking thing about those people on the Big Island that got their homes blown away by that 
by Kilauea this year. Well, I can be by the home on the mountain. Well, geez, really? Because that's probably the only place they could afford to buy a goddamn house. Sometimes it's but not a choice, Shannon. You're, you're right. Talk crap about people in Malibu. You know they can afford it, and so what? There's still people. They still have feelings. Those they're still fleeing for their life. Uh, why? Why are we blaming people for climate change? I mean, it's seriously not people. It's capitalism. It's five major fucking corporations, and I think three or four of them are probably oil companies. Yeah. So, I mean, you can you can continue to fucking drink out of uh, metal straws and ban plastic bags and, and, you know, all this environmental shit, but the bottom line is, if we don't do something about capitalism, the fossil fuel industry is going to fuck up our environment they already have, and that's directly affecting the, what's happening in California, uh, what's happening here. Um, and, and don't give me this bullshit that he's a fucking climate denier. He's not a motherfucking climate denier. He's got a goddamn case pending right now in Scotland for one of his goddamn golf courses because he wants to build a wall because of the rise in the ocean. Well, and that's the thing, Michael. Oh, listen, listen, God. listen, Brad. No, that's... Listen, let me say it. Listen. Listen. That is... Apples are climate deniers exactly. for a reason. For a reason. That's exactly right. That's They're fascists, Some man. They fucking know that the planet is... It's like hurling towards its doom, dude. They don't give a shit. I think that they and honestly that, believe... Let me finish. Understand. Let me finish, please, Shannon. I, I think that... The, I honestly believe that these people think that they're going to survive it. That they're going to let this fucking planet do its thing. That they have their fucking bunkers and their little fucking... Their massive spreads and their... And this is so tinfoil hat, okay? But, like... I think they don't give a shit. I think, yeah, Trump fucking knows that climate change is real. Give me a break. I mean, as made evident by the, the precautions he's taking for his golf courses, like you described, Mike. But you don't give a fuck. There's a lot of people that are making money hand over fist every fucking minute of every fucking day. And they want to continue making it. So they're and seeing all this destruction. Like that. They're seeing Hurricane Maria and all these hurricanes. And they're seeing all these fires and going, yeah, fucking mismanagement. Yeah, yeah it, that's what I was going to say. Immigrant caravans and whatnot. Immigrants are fucking up the environment. And, yeah. Let me just say one thing. Let me say something. Okay. You said that Mother Earth was, you know, hurling towards her doom. No, she's not. You know who's hurling towards their doom? Fucking humanity. Mother Earth will re will rebound. And well, I recover. agree with that. I agree with that. But we... Yeah, but, yeah, it's but, a lot but, of... Gut. All the money in the world is not going to keep you... From fucking dying. Well, yeah, Michael, that, I will counter with this, bro. 60% of life on the planet is extinct in, right now. So, you know, the, the, it's all an ecosystem. It all has to jive together for the planet to survive. And a mass extinction is not good for the planet. And, like, I don't know in these other mass extinctions that you added massive amounts of pollution and all this shit. Like, I don't... People need... I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's, us. it's us that's going to die. It's not the earth. It's I us. agree with you there. But I don't want to fucking die. I want to have great, great, great grandchildren, dude. Well, I, mean, I know. I, I am. But I want my great, great grandchildren to have a fucking planet to live on. Right. And, you know, like, there's not, what, are we going to go to the moon? No. We're going to go to Mars? No. no. Why don't we just fucking take care of what we have here? No. Capitalism, and corporation. That's worth that. Yes, Shannon, please. Sorry. We've had technology since the, four, uh, the 50s, some stuff since the 40s, but definitely since the 50s, the late 50s, solar, and why, I mean, when we've had fucking technology forever, okay, pretty much, <laughs> for a long time. Um, so I don't understand why, with capitalism, they have to stay stuck on, they can fucking prosper off of, Wind and solar? Uh, well, not necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, renewable fuels are more cost effective as far as like just getting access to the resources and then actually like converting things, resources into power. Like all of this exactly. stuff costs. It, it just the, the profit margin and the profit potential is nowhere near the same, everything, you know. Right. Things are already in place right now. Infrastructure and everything for them to please is already in place. We already have fucking gas-consuming 
you know, smog emitting vehicles that we have to have. Okay. So, I mean, you know, that was why the whole thing, man, dying in your car, how fucking horrible to die yeah, in a climate, um, climate stain fire in, in a vehicle that pretty much caused it. What was that, Sean? We have the we have the technology to convert engines to, you know, whatever the oil when they recycle them from right. fast food and totally, kitchen totally, stuff. and well, and that's and we that's the totally do it. It's that's the point. It. No, no, that's totally the point, guys. It's like everything is the there. Everything is. What we need to do. It's all at our fingertips. We have the access to everything to. To, to proper forms of fuel that are renewable and even good for the planet, cost effective, all the technology and stuff that's necessary to like but totally all turn all this shit on its head and do it right. Plastic. Well, you know, we have the that's ability to do all, all this all shit. Plastic. We have one fucking obstacle, bro. It's it's the 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 fucking people, the capitalists, the capitalists, the bosses. Yeah, you know? I was gonna say what. Well, because they have come in and uh, they have bought some of these patents and squashed the technology yep. so they could continue to make profit because that's all it's about. It's about profit. That's right. And these it's people are not going to fix it for us. It's going to take us. Organizing within Absolutely. our own communities and creating the reality that we really want for ourselves. I, I mean... Oh, and I, that's us to do it, man. Yeah. Well, hey, look. I fucking love you guys. I love you too, man. Love you, Shannon. Love you too, Mike. And, um, dude, much love and respect to all you out there watching. Please, you know, sub and whatever, and then go to our Facebook page where Shannon does amazing up-to-date information things, like, every single day. And like and share stuff there. And then when you're done, go over and see what's up on our Twitter because Bobby O from the Bronx is over there running that shit for us. And, um, yeah. Do you yeah. have any actions you want to share that you want us to put up? You can do that. Please do. Send it either via, Especially you know, private know, message like, to our Facebook or, yeah. The fire. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm having problems. I'm having real problems because I started the Facebook page and the Twitter, and now I do nothing to them. And you guys have <laughs> taken them over. Turn them into these wonderful, amazing things, and I'm, yes, I'm like I'm like the melancholy. Well, I miss you, Mike, because you shared the funny. Yeah, you need to get back with sharing the funny, homeboy. That's what you do, yeah. Mike. <laughs> you're you're ra you're Rancho Relaxo, yeah. man. Come on, you know you're, you're yeah. And the music. Yeah, yeah. And the music. Anyway. Um, there someone we have talking. seriously fucking ran our incredibly stupid mouths long enough. <laughs> I think right. the earth is, has, has said, cool, dude, get the fuck out. So I think we should do that. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Love you. Peace out.